We are now going to see how we can use the cross-correlation functionality to perform a root cause analysis. We are working in a continuous process. The temperature inside the reactor has to stay more or less constant to obtain a good product quality. However, our colleagues have recently detected a temperature spike in the reactor, which led to a low product quality. We would like to find out the root cause of this temperature spike. So we are going to perform this analysis in two steps. First, we are going to find out if this kind of temperature spike has already happened before or if it's only a one-time occurrence. If similar spikes happened in our reactor at other times, we are going to overlay these events on our focus chart. Then, in the second step, we are going to use the cross-correlation functionality to see if we can find other tags in our process which are correlated to this increase of temperature. So let's start with the first step, which is to find and overlay similar events with a sharp temperature increase. For this, we are going to perform a similarity search. So we create a new search based on the temperature and its absolute values, and we choose a minimum similarity score of 70%. We can also add more weight to this part of the graph to inform Trendminer that the spike here is the most important pattern and that it should be given more weight in the search. So we start the search and we find seven results. It means that we had in total seven temperature spikes during the search period. We can add these results as layers on our focus chart. So every time we add a layer, we can see the shape of the spike found by Trendminer. And we can see indeed that the spikes are really similar. So these events probably have the same root cause. We are now done with the first part of the analysis. We have overlaid several similar events. We can now remove the weight and continue with the second part of the analysis. So we would like to find out which tags in our process are correlated to the temperature in these time frames represented by the layers. For this, we are going to use the cross correlation tool, which is located in the diagnose menu. Knowing our process, an upstream time shift of one hour should be sufficient. We can now restrict the search if we want to look for correlations only in the tags related to the process. So we can add a filter, tm-tsp star, which means that Trendminer will look for correlations only among the tags that start with this name. And Trendminer here finds three results with a significant correlation to the temperature tag. We can open the list of results. The first result has a very high correlation score of 79.7%. The next result has a correlation score of minus 11%, which is much less significant. So we can add the first result tag to our view by clicking on the plus. This tag corresponds to the temperature in the cooling water. So for us, it makes sense that both tags are correlated. The temperature in the cooling system has a direct influence on the temperature inside of the reactor. Moreover, we can see that the temperature of the cooling system is an early indicator. That means there is a significant time shift between the correlated events. And indeed, we can see here on the graph that the temperature in the cooling system increases first and then, 11 minutes later, the temperature inside of the reactor increases as well. So using the cross-correlation functionality, we have found a very likely root cause of our issue. 